Can you hear me? I've got my microphone. Yes, yeah. Philip, we can hear you. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, it's very clear, Philip. Everything is okay. fine. Yes, perfect. So I think maybe for those who are not speaking later on, maybe they can mute their microphone. Yes, yes. Shall we, uh, shall we off our video and we only put it on when we are speaking? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah up, up to you. Uh, microphones, let's uh, switch off the microphones when you are not speaking. And uh, videos, up to you. I mean, you can either keep it or leave it. That's fine. Yeah, I yeah. think for the smoothness of the internet, is we might as well uh, put off our video. Yes. When yeah, if, if your connection is not very strong, then the mm -hmm. suggestion is to keep the videos off. Okay. Yeah, but but when you are when you are speaking, uh, put on the video also. Then uh, we can we all can see you. And also when you are taking the group photo as well, we uh, we can switch off the, switch on the videos. Indika, uh, just to confirm, afterwards the uh, global network meeting. It's yeah. uh, after this, right? Uh, not soon after this. It's uh, yeah, not uh, soon after this because it's about ten thirty p.m. in Malaysia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. night time. Sorry, yes. <laughs> we we need to have some some buffer time in between also. So sorry. Right, it's okay. Okay. Uh, sorry. If, uh, before we start, for the sake of uh, we are taking the attendance. Uh, so uh, Bhairavi is from uh from the general, right? Yeah. Uh, Vijaya Shrestha. Is an uh, observer from University of Colombo? No, no, I think he's from Mahidol. Which I, I think is oh. Mahidol. Yes. Uh, because we have to we have to write that. Okay, Fatin, take note. Uh, SLMA? SLMA is our IT coordination. Okay. Medical so, Association. Medical 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 Association. Association. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, Helen? Who's Helen? Helen is also from journal. Oh, from a journal. Yeah. From a journal. Yeah, okay, I'm from journal. Yes. Hi, everybody. Okay, maybe your, your face is not full, that's why I cannot not so clear. All okay. right. Okay. okay. All right. So. Bye -bye. Yeah. I think uh, we we captured everyone. Yep. Yes. So you can start if you are ready. So we have a quorum, yeah? We can start, yeah? We, yes. we have the quorum, Definitely, yes. yes. We can start. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, greetings to everyone. Uh, good afternoon from uh, Malaysia. Uh, good morning, you know, or, or, good, or good afternoon or good evening, you know, wherever you're from, you know. Uh, right. So it's indeed my, a privilege, you know, for me to chair this meeting as the uh, president of APAC. Uh, it is really unfortunate that this year we couldn't have a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so here we are having this uh, virtual uh, executive board meeting. So let us get the ball rolling now. Uh, now, apologies, uh, Secretary Masna. Well, there's no apologies. Uh, we, we did not receive any uh, feedback from uh, Professor Soyun Kim from Korea. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. And yeah, no proxy. Did not at receive all? any any email from uh, reply from from Korea. All right. And so you don't have any proxy, yeah? Uh, not not in this meeting. Okay. So let us now move on. Uh, because this is a virtual meeting, so uh, we won't be taking long as compared to the usual meeting because we don't want to be glued in front of this computer, you know, for hours. Uh, now, the next item on the list is confirmation of the Executive Council meeting, March 2020. If you all can, uh, you know, please look at the uh, booklet prepared by Party, uh, the latest copy, version 5. Right, so uh, confirmation I, of... I can, I can share the screen if you need. Yeah, I think that would be good. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, if Fatin wants to share, she also can do. Uh, give me a little time. Fatin, do you have the booklet with you? 
for the screen yes. sharing? Yes, yeah. Prof. Would you like to share the screen from your end? Uh, sure, yeah. can. Okay, yeah. so I'll give. I will give. Yeah, your co-host, you can. You can share the screen. Great. Well done. Well done. Okay, we are in uh, item number four now. Uh, exactly, the council meeting confirmation of the minutes. I think we just walked through the minutes. If you can make it bigger, Fatin, that would be good. The screen. Yeah. Okay, so this is the uh, minutes. Uh, ECM meeting. No, this one wrong. Wait, Ralph. Uh, the latest one is which thirteen? Which thirteen? This was the ECM after the conference. Right, this is the one. This is the one. Yeah, we have another uh, this, one. This one in March. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, uh, can we briefly go through it and see whether there is any uh, alterations? Okay, Prof. Okay, so this is the first page. Do you think I can put it full screen or is it my or my my computer? Right, right, right. Okay, got it, got it. Yeah. So this is the first page. If there's anyone who has any comments or you know um, any editing issues. How can I edit this? Okay. Right. So that's the 52 APAC conference. That's fine. Right. Okay, so we are just going through those. Uh, then someone will propose and second it, all right? Uh, APEC membership, uh, we will deliberate on all this individually later on. Okay, uh, next page, please. Right, collaboration SLA. Okay, so this is just for information. Uh, defining APEC region, uh, Bruce will talk about this later on and inactive as to what we are going to do with all these uh, members who are inactive. Okay, next page, please. Right, uh, the various reports. So these are the regional reports. Uh, for today's meeting, we won't go through all the reports, but we will just uh, ask the various regional director as to what are the issues they have, uh, uh, you know, in their in their own individual region. Okay, next. Right, uh, so this is the World Leadership Dialogue. Uh, uh, we have actually attended this. And then the MOU between APEC and ASPP uh, uh, SH. So this is also, you know, we have, uh, I will brief you later on on that as well in my president's report and the role of APEC during, so these are what we have done uh, Later on, we'll brief you on, you know, all the activities of APEC during this pandemic. Okay, so that's the minutes for March uh, 2020. Uh, anyone want to propose it and uh, second it, please? I propose. Okay, Indika proposed, seconded? Second. Right, uh, Bruce, right? Yeah. Okay, good. Right, uh, can we move on now? Actions arising from the ECM. So uh, can we go to the actions? Uh, you have to move back, yeah. Okay, you go to the minutes and the actions, right? Oh, okay, Prof. Yeah. Okay, so this is the updates of 52nd APEC conference. Uh, so this will be handled by the University of Air Lanka, which I think uh, later on at the end of this meeting, uh, they will give us the latest updates, right, Dr. Santi? I think it has yes, since they're there, right. And also the uh, Prof. Agostin will also brief us on some of the strategies to be taken uh, in order for us to achieve the APEC vision and mission. And also Prof. Jimba later on will also deliver on the APEC uh, membership fees. I think uh, I'm actually repeating. And so yeah, maybe actually, go, yeah, yeah. report. 
Yes, yes. So I think we go to item number six. Uh, Prof. Jimpa is not here yet, right? We can start with Prof. Augustine. Okay. So we start with uh, the next one. Right, it's yeah. actually number six. Oh, oh, Jimpa is here. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, Jimpa. Yes. Okay, so it's uh, item number six now, Prof. Jimba. It's the proposal on APEC membership fees. Yeah, if you can go to that page. Right. Would you like to walk us through, Jimba? Uh, so, can I start it now for this? Uh, yes, please. Uh, yeah, uh, last time, uh, uh, we discussed this issue and uh, I said we should uh, create a small group, uh, including Professor Kim and others, but uh, sorry, I didn't have a, a discussion with them, but uh, I could analyze the situation of Japan. And I found we have uh, five schools of public health. Uh, most of them are under the Graduate School of Medicine. And some medical schools have uh, uh, public health programs, and they are providing um, mass, uh, uh, most of public health, but very small scale. And the remaining uh, 60 medical schools have uh, only one or two departments of public health under medical schools. Uh, usually the staff met uh, the number of staff members are three or four in each small department. And also we have many nutrition schools, schools for nurses and other professional schools. And they also have some small unit of public health. And the current regulation, um, or current policy of APAC is to charge $2,000 for all above. So uh, and it looks like this situation is similar in Korea and other uh, Asian countries. So having a big scale school of public health is not common in some Asia Pacific region. And uh, last time uh, Bruce proposed uh, three types of uh, charging methods, 2000, 1000 and 5000 and 500, depending on the size of the uh, unit uh, school of uh, public health. So, uh, so this time I cannot make a specific plan, but uh, by the next time uh, with Professor Kim and others, I'll try to make it more specific. So uh, what I found is maybe we need this kind of uh, uh, detailed analysis about schools of public health or department of public health in each country. Uh, so uh, I want to make sure who are the members again. And uh, uh, I expect Fatim will send me the minutes uh, about who are the members and then uh, after finishing this conference, I will contact them. And the uh, advantage of COVID-19 is we can now easily uh, carry out this kind of uh, online meeting uh, without me uh, uh, visiting uh, Korea or inviting Japan. So I think uh, I can take uh, immediate action to follow it up. Sorry for my delay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Prof. Jimba. So that means um, you will actually, you know, uh, see to this. Uh, Fatin will, you know, uh, finish you with a list of all our members. And now the categories are, uh, you'll be having three categories, 2,000 US, 1,000 US, and 500 US, depending on the numbers of faculty uh, in a certain school or in a certain department, all right? So we will wait for that, perhaps, you know, uh, when you call for the next meeting among your own small group. Yeah, Jimba, is that right? Yes, and uh, yeah. some, some uh, department of public health in Japan uh, told me if it's $500, they can easily manage. But 2000 is difficult. Yeah, so, so uh, I think you study that first and then perhaps uh, you give us the proposal at our next meeting. Yeah, okay. thank you so much, Prof. Jimba, thank you. Right, uh, moving on to item number seven. Uh, 
just wait until the um, the uh, documents in front of us. Uh, not my secretary general report. The uh, yeah, this that's is it. The one. beautiful. That's it. Okay, so the task was to provide a discussion um, around defining and mapping the region. Um, and also identifying some of the tasks that uh, regions might take take on. Um, originally, the intent was to meet with all of the, uh, the regional um, uh, directors, and that has not happened. And so what I'd like to do is pr just uh, remind us what actually our constitution says in relation to um, both the secretary general role, but then how that connects with the regional directors, and then some of the other implications bound or found within the constitution. And then take us to the website and what we actually have there, and then finally some recommendations. So the Secretary General has responsibility for development expansion and retention of membership, strengthening of memberships, collaborative efforts in co cooperation, and this is the key bit, with the regional directors as well as establishing long-term plans and networks. Now, the regional directors then are nominated from countries where there are more than six, okay? So that means the minimum number required to be nominated as a regional director is seven, okay? Um, members um, from your area. And the regional director um, shall be designated by the executive council and approved by the general assembly. Okay, so, so that's the, the activity. Now, the implication for this is that they are also officers of the association with full voting rights at the executive meetings and the eligible support for support from the executive to carry out regional activities. So these are the, these are the um, important bits. The, um, to be, a, to be a regional office, so we keep on going down, at the moment, our website says, so when we look under regional offices, we actually have a little bit of a mishmash, a little bit of, um, a, a little bit of inconsistency. So Kuala Lumpur Secretariat Office is put down as a regional office, but it's not, not in the definition of what a regional office should be. The Taipei Treasury Office is put down as a regional office, but it's not because it's not consistent with the definition. So I think we need to just make sure that the website is accurate. Then within the regional offices themselves, we have some which designate a region, some which are designations from a country, and some which represent just a city, but are actually inaccurately put trade. So we have the America's regional office, Australian regional office, Bangkok, Beijing, both cities, and so on down through to um, South Asia regional office, which is essentially the Sri Lanka regional office representing a region, the Taiwan regional office country, and then um, Korea actually wasn't on there. So when we look at the website, there's a need to improve the consistency of the website. So my, my recommendation, the first one, is that regional offices only represent a country or geographic region. For example, they can be designated, um, as I've got down below, for a, a geographic region. And within this, I've listed some of the countries that this would then include, but I only went to latitude 45. Um, now, what that would mean is that we would then have to um, rename the Bangkok and the Beijing regional office to probably China and, and, um, and to Thailand. The, within each of these regions that I've identified below, we have already identified regional offices within a designated region. So for example, East Asia, South Asia, and so on. Within the Oceania one, 
there is only Australia, and within the Americas, there is only the United States. So my recommendation is we neaten up the website and include, make sure that we uh, change the names and that we consider these broader classifications. Um, and what that would maybe allow us to do was that countries, oh, sorry, member institutions, for example, from uh, Hong Kong or maybe from Nepal, might then be able to identify a regional office that uh, they could align, align to, even if they don't have um, six members or seven members, sorry. So this is my second recommendation. Where there are insufficient member institutions in a country or area, members can nominate to be uh, represented by a pre-existing regional office. And this would then start to build in increased collaboration. Within the activities that are then done, I'm actually suggesting we don't change those because at the moment, the constitution already says to us that they will be building capacity and so on. And so what I'm recommending is that we, in our annual reporting, we just standardize a little bit the types of reporting that we do. And a number of the regional offices are already doing this. The first one would be to make sure we have a list of members and institutions, that the next bit of reporting would be under development or capacity building activities undertaking with existing member institutions. The third one would be activities focused upon expansion and retention and the outcomes of those. And the fourth one would be activities demonstrating members' collaborative efforts. And this could be between regional offices, not just within regional office. And my final recommendation is that where regional office membership falls below the required number, that is more than six, that the office be given two years to recruit members before it loses regional office status. Because again, at the moment, we're silent on, on how we deal with this. I'll pause now and just uh, invite comment. Right, thank you so much, Bruce. Right, uh, so you have come up with uh, several recommendations uh, as to how we should be defining uh, our region. Uh, can we invite some comments, please, from the floor? Uh, yes, um, I think it's, it's very common sense. Um, it makes a lot of sense to, um, uh, to streamline and to organize um, and to focus our um, efforts. I think it's very important that we do have some definitions and um, yeah. I certainly think it's a good idea um, to um, put them into regions and um, and also if a um, if the capacity falls below six after two years then um, the status um, is lost. I think that's that's fair. Right. And so by region, you mean, uh, Prof. Philip, you mean uh, recommendation number one, right? Yes. So I think that's those that organization is good. Um, because also for Oceania um, yeah. or Australia, it means that uh, we know um, the countries where we should be um, um, inviting yeah. people to be part of the um, region. Um, mm -hmm. Part of the regional office and um i mean because there's no office for new zealand i mean we have said at the last meeting that um we would do this but um i think this is um, a way of formalizing the conversations yeah um, yeah so new zealand and the rest of the islands yeah. will then come under oceana yeah and That's right, similarly because I, I believe fiji had been a member yes um, yeah. But they're not financial. Correct. Yeah. And also, I think in some region, our member institution is also quite big. Um, mm. So, Wayun, can I just, um, when I was in the process of doing this, I was acutely aware of the 
geopolitical issues in the region as well. And, and um, so I went through a variety of ways of classification and which countries get designated into which areas. And you'll notice, for example, that there is, um, that Taiwan in some instances has also been classified under Southeast Asia. Um, you know, and so that's a, that's a, I only put that back in there because it's a geopolitical issue. Um, and they're the same, there are also um, groups within here that don't necessarily recognize. So for example, again, you'll see in East Asia, I've separated out Hong Kong, um, Macau, which, you know, there's a political issue there and we can decide how we de determine this. Um, I don't think this should be a public document at this point until we've talked that through a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, because I, I reckon that's uh, also a sensitive issue as well. And for us, if you call, you know, I mean, like Malaysia is under Southeast Asia. So we don't consider Taiwan as part of Southeast Asia. And if you're considering, uh, you know, ASEAN, just like EU, ASEAN only consists of 10 countries. The other, the other Victor here, I think yes. this, this thing is quite sensitive. Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan is not considered a country in 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 the uh, in UN, so the idea is: Are we an academic association, or are we are we focused on UN uh, UN perspective? So if you if you a problem when you when you when you group oh, when no, you no, group no, in, no 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 when you when you group, it, when you group it under this way no no we are not UN member. Don't talk don't talk to me about UN. We are not UN member yet. And no, so, so so if we are not we are not then 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 the the thing the thing become complicated when we put it this way. I'm just putting my my yeah, your views. So the, the no no better. It, I agree with you, Betty. Betty, I agree finance. with you. Basically, I just I just I'm just saying that if we if we classify this way, it might it might it might be complicated. No, we're in fact we're actually okay. So in our wisdom in hindsight, so in our wisdom that uh, when we originally wrote the constitution, we classified a region and hence a a regional director as either a country or an area. Yeah. So that's that's in the constitution. And right. and so, so it we can get around any lack of recognition um, of different areas or countries. So mm -hmm. that is how we've actually managed to get get these these various names and groupings. Um, and so so we don't actually have to change the the constitution at all we've already accommodated some of these different things. And it really, it's a grouping. So for example, if Hong Kong could get six universities, it would be entitled to call itself or could put up a regional director for that area. Uh, can I uh, uh, tell my opinion? Uh, this has been a headache when I was... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, ETAC president, and uh, I couldn't reach any uh, conclusion on this matter. And uh, so theoretically, uh, dividing regions uh, by East, South, or Southeast Asia, it, it looks beautiful on paper. But uh, when I first became a regional director in Tokyo, uh, I was asked to do something for Mongolia and other countries, and I had no contact. And the budget is also almost zero in those days. And uh, uh, if you look at the uh, WHO uh, or UNICEF, regional office has a lot of money to run their work, but we're different. So uh, when it is divided into East Asia and South Asia, one regional director can do very little. And they have to contact all these countries. So uh, I, these days I think about uh, why don't we uh, throw away regions? <laughs> no regions, APEC as one. And we may assign uh, some uh, key person in a city or in region uh, by the task, like uh, health promotion or cancer control director, uh, uh, and uh, they may 
be everywhere. So looks like uh, sticking to the idea of a region may not get us somewhere. So uh, let's uh, rethink about uh, this uh, region issue. Uh, it's been very, very difficult to solve. Can I have views from others as well, please? Because I think this is still work in progress. Uh, it is not half in stone. And so I reckon that Bruce, you know, later on will further study it in and how, you know, we can all come to a consensus as to this division of, of uh, a, a region or countries. I agree, I agree with Jimba. Yeah. It's yes. Much, it's much more better. This is quite difficult. Yeah. Yeah, not name it by region, right? And put all the countries inside. Yeah, because it is, it is, this is just geographical. Yes. Yes, I, I also agree with uh, what Jimba suggested. But I just want to call, uh, caution everyone that uh, previously we, we, we did have a certain uh, tasks that, that we give to uh, individual uh, members to, for them to, to run activities uh, on behalf of APEC. But unfortunately, um, it, it didn't went uh, well after um, the late uh, Prof. Walter uh, leave us, for example, uh, the oral health, uh, the island, uh, peace, peace, I think uh, something got to do with peace and justice. Uh, and then for the island, there, there are so many activities uh, that, that we had identified before, but uh, all of those activities actually uh, went down uh, after some time. So that's also difficult because uh, we found that uh, only few members are uh, involved in, in that particular activity or task that we had assigned. So again, I think we also have to look into this, um, but I kind of agree that perhaps it is now the time for us to no longer uh, have a representative according to regions because we see that it is more of a country representative rather than regions. Can I can I just uh, make some comment? So the at the moment, we define a region as either country or area, okay? Um, and the purpose that I, when I put down these East Asia, Southeast Asia, was to illustrate not responsibilities. So I, for example, didn't necessarily see that Japan would automatically start to have responsibilities for Mongolia. That's not, not the intent of this. But what it shows you is the potential scope for APAC in relation to our geographic bounded region of the Asia Pacific. And trying to make some decisions as to how high up we go and, and, and where things actually are which is why I restricted it to the 45th latitude. Um, because, you know, in theory, Canada and other places could be included. Um, we've already had Kyrgyzstan as a, as a previous member. You know, so we've had examples of groups which have joined APAC for a period and then have, have, have moved on. So I was just wanting to illustrate that I don't think we need to change our definitions. But it does allow, for example, if Nepal could have six universities that were interested, then it would be able to apply for a regional director's position in, in APAC, which has to be awarded by the executive committee. So it's not a, it's not just a, or six, seven years universities. It's not an absolute, it's not a guaranteed, it has to make an application. I do think we have to be careful, though, in suggesting that we create other directors doing other things. Because at the moment, a regional director is considered formally an officer of the executive. That means they have voting rights. They have um, potential to access money through the Treasury for regional activities and, and so on. So 
I think I think we need to be, and the primary function of the regional offices is about recruitment, membership, and capacity building in those regions. So I think we just need to be careful that we, um, if we want to keep regional offices, that we're clear about their function. If we want to do project development, that's different. You know, we can invite people to do health promotion initiatives or as I'm already doing, for example, planetary health initiatives on behalf of APAC. But that doesn't mean I create a regional office to do that. So I just think we need to be very clear about our use of the language. At the moment, regional office consists of seven members in, a, in an either at a country level or in an area, and they define the area. I, I think, Bruce, I, I like this idea. Um, because what it does mean is that um, it's an approach that is more inclusive than exclusive. Um, so without, um, you know, for example, going back to Australia, calling us Oceania, it means now that there's going to be responsibility to recruit from Fiji, New Zealand, etc. Um, same with Myanmar, um, places where we don't have um, members or, or substantive members, um, it identifies um, that there will be efforts towards some um, increasing uh, membership in those areas. Uh, I'm also more in agreement with uh, Bruce, uh, provided, provided this classification address the geopolitical complication. That is the area that we have to be very careful about. For example, whether North Korea and South Korea would like to be governed by one, uh, one regional office. I, I, I personally think, I mean, if those political sensitivities are addressed, this kind of classification would make sense as far as the expansion of APEC goes, because this kind of classification would help expansion of APEC and identify new member institutions and uh, getting more and more into that. I mean, if we take uh, Sri Lanka example, I mean, even though there are six member universities in the country, I would like to keep it as Southeast Asia because that would give us the potential to expand and connect up with other countries. I think now it is more feasible because uh, there's no need for side visits. So financial uh, financial obligation from the regional director side is minimal. So what you have to be is the ability to connect up with the other countries in the region and then identify the potential members and encourage them. So in that sense, it makes some kind of logic actually, as far as the future goes. So as uh, Bruce mentioned, this doesn't mean that a particular regional director need to look into the different, different pro projects personally, but they can identify their projects and then inform the regional director and the regional director can present them to the APAC and then they can be encouraged. Uh, so in, in that way, so this I mean, psych, some kind of regional based arrangement would facilitate those kind of coordination. So not really financial, not really workload, but more, more towards coordination. In that sense, I think it makes sense uh, it makes sense, provided the ge geopolitical influence are make uh, sense. Shall I ask uh, but Dr. Neil also because he has a lot of experience as a kind of a health minister person? Yes, yes I, I share the same opinion with Indika and that to have a kind of, uh, not to bring the, the, the political yeah. sensitive issues into the scenario so that we will manage in administratively and uh, more in, in technical terms. Technical terms, yes. Can I? Yes, uh, yeah, there's prosody. Yeah, um, I'm looking at the Southeast Asia and thinking about the COVID problems right now. We have the, we need to do something with the border area. So I'm looking at the GMS area divided the Southeast Asia into more of the coast region, uh, Laos, Vietnam, Malaysia, Thailand, Myanmar, Cambodia, and then uh, divided another group. Uh, this is because of, uh, of the COVID recurrent in Thailand that we are facing. So that might help each country in this region still having a growing number of the School of Public Health. So that, that to be considered. 
because we cannot avoid that public health in one country will be uh, global or regional problems to control the infectious disease at the moment, as, as well as the cultural uh, among this country. Yes, uh, you're absolutely right, uh, Prof. City, because, uh, uh, you know, uh, COVID or any other diseases, you know, uh, they know no borders, yeah, you know. And so here, I think the whole purpose is trying to uh, vaccinate uh, what are our APEC member institutions come under which region or, 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 or handled by which uh, regional director. So uh, that is the whole purpose of this uh, uh, test. So perhaps I think, uh, Bruce, you yeah, might Ryan, like, can, yeah. Ryan, can I just make a, a commentary? When I was writing the East Asia, South Asia, my thought wasn't that, for example, that one designation would necessarily represent East Asia, or if we took Southeast Asia, which is a, perhaps a good one for us. We already have regional offices in um, yeah. Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, right? Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not saying that only one of those would represent that area. What I think we need to do in the wording of this is yeah. say something like within the Southeast Asian area, APAC has regional offices in Malaysia, Thailand, yeah. and Indonesia. You know, so we're not saying, and that means that, you know, eventually we would hopefully have more in, in that space. What I was going to suggest, which I, I suspected where you might have been, is that the the people that haven't had input into this yet are the actual regional offices. And what I'd like them to be able to do is give me some feedback in how this would work and maybe some of the changes in wording that would be suitable for the sensitivities in the area. Um, and then we can present this back as a document for ratification. Yes, uh, I think you're absolutely right, Bruce. I think it's just the uh, our, our wording of the whole thing. Uh, because in one region itself, you know, they can have many regional directors, all depending on the country. If a country yeah. has got more, like what you have earlier said, more than, you know, six uh, school of public health of medicine, and then that country, you know, can have a regional uh, a, a director of which, you know, this is what we are currently doing. And so, yeah, I, th I think basically it's just a rewording of it. So if you and the rest of the regional director could sit down and further, you know, polish up on this, I think that would be good. Uh, would you mind doing that, Bruce? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much then. Okay. So I think we'll just leave this matter now uh, with Bruce. Uh, now, let's, let's now move on to the next item, item number eight, uh, Prof. Agostin. It's on uh, APEC vision and mission. Okay, uh, thank you, Professor Law. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Oh, it's really nice. Sorry? Yeah. Sorry? Uh, sorry? Yes. Yeah, yes, I just yes. want to add a few sentences to the previous previous yeah. item. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Albert and I, we suggest put Taiwan in the Southeast Asia. Uh, cluster, cluster. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we are in the in the junction of East Asia and Southeast Asia. <laughs> so it's yeah. hard to yeah. put us, you know, in both. So yeah. um, just better put in the Southeast Asia uh, cluster. I think it's okay. more. Yeah, I'll, 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 we shall leave that to Bruce. Uh, he is going to have meetings with all the regional director, and since you are one of the you know uh, director there, you can actually raise this matter. All right. Yeah, yeah, and I want to emphasize one thing again. Yes. If you are not a Taiwanese, you cannot speak for Taiwan. Please don't do that again. We respect everyone and please respect Taiwan. Thank you. Uh, Betty, sorry. I wasn't I wasn't speaking against you. I was just bringing up the issue and I was just hoping. I won't finish. I finished a sentence. And I was basically saying that. Yeah, this, thank this you. Doesn't, doesn't we will not accept any international bullying again and ever. Yeah, if you are not Taiwanese, you cannot speak for Taiwan. And you want to speak for Taiwan, you're welcome to run for the Taiwan president election. Thank you. Right, okay. I think we just and uh, Right. Uh, can we move on to the next one, please, uh, Prof. Agostin? Yeah. Thank you, Professor Lau. Uh, 
um, this just some thoughts uh, when I'm thinking about uh, how can we, uh, what can we do to achieve our vision and mission. Next slide, please. Yeah, just uh, to uh, remember that these are our purpose. I just took this uh, from our website. So these are the three purposes that APAC want to achieve. They have to activate, expand organic networks of international public and private, public and private public institutions in Pacific area region, and then promote academic development in public health, and then contribute to the fostering of good health and the enhancement of well-being of all residents in the Asia Pacific region and beyond. And then these are the statement of visions. Again, I took this statement from our uh, website. So if uh, there is um, different than the latest version of our constitutions, I think our website should be uh, updated. So uh, these are the vision is to promote the translation of public health education research into evidence-based policies and programs. And then the mission of APEC is to provide thought leadership in the translation of public health through education, research, and collaborations with public stakeholders. So uh, these are the proposed strategies. I think um, we have to concentrate ourselves into public health education. So the first uh, strategy is how we can develop ourselves so that we can become a reverence body for public health education in Asia Pacific region. There are other organizations that already become a reference for public health education, for example, in America or in Europe. But I think the condition in America and Europe, it's not similar to condition that we face in Asia Pacific region. To some extent, maybe the curriculum, the, the, uh, uh, the um, uh, learning outcome that we want to give to our students a bit um, different compared to those uh, programs in uh, America and in uh, Europe. So that's why we have to be able to become a reference body for public health education in Asia Pacific region. The second one, uh, we already have the APAC accreditation body. So uh, I think this is a very strategic one, how we can establish our uh, accreditation body to become a reputable international accreditation agency in Asia Pacific region. So right now, if we want to, um, to conduct um, accreditation for our program, international accreditation for our program, so it is uh, already very well known that there is one in, for, in America region and then another one in European region. But why we have already uh, the accreditation body, so why don't we establish, we improve our accreditation body so that uh, it become a reputable international accreditation agency. And the third strategy is how we can develop ourselves so we become a hub for collaborations among the member institutions. So next slide, please. So these are some uh, ideas of uh, activities that maybe we can uh, try to do together. First, I really propose that um, APEC, uh, how to say, uh, not only put attention on quote unquote original public health education, but also cover various specific fields in public health. For example, environmental health, occupational health and safety, hospital administration, public health nutrition, et cetera. And then we develop standards for learning outcome and curriculum for those programs. We can concentrate ourselves at the postgraduate programs, but uh, to some extent, we also need to cover the bachelor uh, level, bachelor programs, because some countries such as Thailand, Indonesia, and Philippines, we have uh, many uh, bachelor programs in public health. And then um, we, um, it's really good if we can, stand, we can develop standard material and content for some strategic courses so that all the member uh, universities can uh, refer to this uh, material, the standard material and contents. And uh, the, the, the last um, possible activities is um, conducting uh, capacity building trainings for the young faculties. Next, uh, please. These are some activities that relate to the strategy number two, 
of, of course, first we expand our coverage of the uh, topics uh, to uh, other specific field in public health. And then we invite and info faculties from APEC members who have interest, experience, and competence in accreditations. And then we conduct benchmarking to other accreditation body, and then let's develop our accreditation body. We may provide technical assistance to the members of, uh, of the APAC uh, if they want to improve their programs. And of course, we have to promote our services. Otherwise, we are not be uh, acknowledged, we are not be known by the, the uh, members university in the area. And then uh, nobody will put, um, use our services. Uh, next. And these are the um, proposed activities for uh, the third strategy, how we, be, we can become a hub for collaboration among uh, the members. First one is let's develop APAC platform for massive online open courses. This will be very helpful for many of the uni uh, members universities because many of the universities now thinking about uh, inter internationalize themselves and then to improve also uh, mobility, both student and staff mobility. The second one if is um, um, let's develop also APEC student mobility programs. I think this will be very interesting for the members uh, and also for individual students. For uh, about the um, uh, scholarship, etc., we can uh, try to find some uh, funding for the students, and then maybe the the, the rest of the students can uh, what finance themselves also, or they can use the um, uh, financial support from their university, and then we can uh, develop some jo some joint student program that uh, can be participated by students from uh, the member universities. For example, we can conduct workshops, trainings, internships, short courses, so uh, that the students can uh, join in a short time, maybe for two weeks. And then uh, this will improve also uh, what the existence of uh, our organizations. I think those are some uh, ideas uh, that may uh, what uh, can be discussed among us and then we can uh, uh, select or we can enrich with other strategies so that we can really focus or we can enrich our activities so that we can uh, improve our existence uh, within the region. Thank you. Right, thank you so much, Prof. Agostin. Yeah, those are, you know, marvelous uh, strategies and uh, they are huge, uh, you know, uh, strategy by itself, uh, covering, you know, the, the public health curriculum itself, uh, covering, uh, you know, the human resource as far as uh, uh, trying to groom uh, public health leaders. And also you look into the core competencies of uh, public health uh, uh, curriculum. Uh, can I invite some comments, please? Thank you very much. I would like to propose uh, as include nowadays we are talking about public health emergency, emergency so that uh, COVID like thing and also natural disasters are there is very common in our area. So therefore I think some kind of collaborative activities within our among our membership for such kind of thing. One. And secondly, I would rather suggest to have a kind of short term uh, exchange programs of our uh, the academics or maybe students higher studies uh, for limited number of uh, limited number of people to I mean the having uh, exchange programs in various settings so that they get the experience of other countries in maybe centers of excellence uh, in, uh, in, in in individual membership countries. Yes, I, I think within APEC itself, we have got a huge uh, uh, membership, you know, of the various uh, schools. Yeah, uh, and, and I see that, you know, the, uh, the mobility program uh, for students and for academics, it's something that I think uh, APEC should, should uh, embark on. 
And also, I think the uh, accreditation, I think you have said it very rightly, uh, Prof. Agostin. And so uh, it's already existing, you know, under, you know, Prof. Uh, Indica's uh, leadership. Uh, perhaps I think we should further reinforce it. And I could see that some of these tragedies uh, uh, you will need to establish, you know, sub uh, committees to actually look into uh, the individual uh, uh, strategies itself. And so I see these strategies as kind of, you know, uh, a sustainability uh, project for, for, for APEC. And the other, the other one I would like to draw upon is the APEC platform for MIL, because right now, um, uh, I, I think this whole pandemic itself has actually changed our teaching and learning, and all of us are moving into online. So perhaps yeah. some kind of micro credentialing courses, you know, uh, could yeah. be could be devised, could be developed, you know, under APAC, and then we can subsequently put that, you know, in the APAC website, and also it can be also a form of income generating for APAC as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 Actually, I I fully agree with that suggestion regarding the MOOCs or the different online courses because this is a golden opportunity for us to develop material. I mean, just yeah. imagine this conference we generates so much material online. So we should not waste this material because that will be useful for future to come. Because with the current uh, COVID situation, in a way, it's a blessing in disguise that we were able to develop such a huge amount of online learning material. So we can use this opportunity to go for online learning because that is something that we have yeah. been looking forward to. Because at the moment, the cyber university seem to be limited to one country only. So I think uh, better okay. to have an APAC specific yeah. online learning platform. Yeah. I, and then invite more participation like, like from more. the I agree, yes. I agree with uh, Prof. Yeah. Lau that we can look at micro credentialing. Basically, is what is the term is more of uh, looking at cost wise instead of instead of credentialing the whole whole public health program. Like I want to learn something from Indonesia. I think we have we have discussed this uh, before that we can have a regional kind of uh, uh, program. They're looking at regional issue yes. than just than just local issue because when we have local issue on the platform, then it become it is still not not really good. If you have can have international issue or regional issue, then you'll be good. Yes. Like regional regional yeah. occupational health program. I think we need yes. to develop it together. Yeah. 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 Very good suggestion. I, yeah. I agree with the micro credential program, especially with the COVID and the uh, Prof City, can you speak louder, please? <laughs> I I said I, I like the idea of the micro credential among the region, especially in the topic of the uh, COVID. Is is region can contribute to something? Another topic that uh, we should uh, focus on is the SDG, because sustainable development going on in this region, yeah. and we can share a lot in terms of the public health strategy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah I, I think as long as we, uh, you know, at a later stage, we are all agreeable to having this meal or micro-credentialing, then we can further talk about what topics that can be covered, yeah. you know, under all these courses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I think all these are doable, just that uh, Prof. Agostin could help. Uh, yes. Can I, can... Yeah. Yes, uh, Prof. Agostin. No. Two more cents. Yeah, I, think, uh, yeah. I think it's great that, that we are coming up with all the strategies for the for the students, especially with regards to the MOOCs and student mobility program. What about uh, the faculty members themselves? Uh, perhaps yeah. number three, we can also put that as join a faculty program. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because the capacity it, building, yeah. yeah. Because the mobility is not just for students, yeah, uh, okay, it's yeah. between uh, faculty members as well among APEC uh, institutions, okay. yeah. Yeah, APEC mobility. Yes, uh, Prof. Betty. Oh, yeah, okay. I want to. Um, Echo to the uh, MOOCs idea, yeah, the MOOCs, yeah, and uh, uh, just to uh, share with you that actually um, in the past two years under the CCHP, we already have several uh, videos on the website for free, so everyone is um, welcome to um, look at it and also use it, All right? And uh, um, the second thing is that. Um, I also like the idea to um, include or to also cover the other general public health discipline. And please just add global health, ah, global health yeah. into it. 
Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Augustine. Sure. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if we have no other issues on this, uh, thank you so much, Prof. Augustine. Yeah. Ryan. Um, Sorry, Ryan. Yes. Yes, um, Bruce. Um, I just wanted to again support it. Um, I've had the privilege of looking at Collins um, or reading Collins' uh, Walter Patrick Memorial Lecture. Yeah. And and in that he highlighted some data from the region, which. Yeah. Just high, which really just illustrates the degree of the level of expertise that exists within this region. And I yes. sometimes think that um, culture in the region stops people with expertise actually saying we are expert in these areas. Yeah. You know, the Americans do it very easily. They'll tell you they're the best in the world at doing something. But I think... If you go and look at if you go and look at the data that Colin presents in his talk, it really shows that in relation to COVID, you know, that we have the very best of outcomes in in this region. And then, yeah. the while we may have, for example, Augustine mentioned that Indonesia is not doing so well, we have to consider the level of resource available and the population size and other elements. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. And so I, I just want to reinforce that I do think this is a great idea to recognise the expertise that exists here and to, yeah. to, to, to just not be apologetic, but to say, yes, we can offer accreditation because we have expertise in these spaces. Yeah. The other thing I would just like to add to this is, and this is a responsibility for members, I think somewhere we need to be having members confirming that they will liaise and engage first with APAC members before others. And this is not to say that you wouldn't, for example, so if you wanted to come to Australia, that you wouldn't, for example, go to a, a um, non-APAC institution. But I would ask that when we're doing these sorts of things, ex exchange and others, that we go APAC members first and then, and then see to others. Because that way we've got to privilege, we've got to preference our own members in the in this and yep. recognise their expertise and others. Um, it also then makes the regional director's role a little bit easier. If we actually have a statement from 40 or 50 or 100 universities saying, we will engage preferentially with APAC members first. Um, so as part of this strategy, that would be a very nice thing to see included. Yeah. I would rather like to add one other thing. Uh, is there any possibility of having a, a research collaborative kind of mechanism among our members, member countries or member institutions? Yeah. So we will have the research collaboration uh, incorporated into one of the strategies. Yeah, from Agostin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think we'll put an end to this uh, proposal on strategies. Thank you very much, Prof. Gossin. So we will now move on to item number nine, there's proposal or any updates on regional activities. Uh, we won't go through an individual report, but among all these uh, from a regional director, Australia, China, Indonesia, Japan, those who have submitted your report, is there any issues that you would like to discuss here uh, in view of the time constraint? Anyone who have any burning issues that you would like to discuss here? Because we yeah. have already got a report. Okay. Yes, Prof. Betty. Yeah, just one point. Uh, also, uh, the same opinion as the previous opinion. Okay. Uh, in Under the CCHP, we would like to initiate some uh, research collaboration among the uh, APAF members. Members. In yeah. the future, maybe some uh, NCD uh, yeah. policy and yes. uh, 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 international comparison, these kind of things. Yeah, yeah. that would be lovely. Yeah, Thank so you. that would be under uh, CCHP, yeah? Okay, yes. right. So any other issues apart from that? Uh, yeah. From yeah. other regional directors, please? From Indonesia, please? Yes, uh, Prof. Agostin. Yeah. So uh, recently in Indonesia, our Ministry of Education really encouraged uh, higher education institution to get uh, international accreditation. And then for this, the Ministry of Education already have a list 
of international accreditation body that can be uh, what uh, acknowledged by the Ministry of Education. And it is uh, specific for every subject. And then for public health, there is no international accreditation body there in the Ministry of Health. And uh, they are asking from the Association of uh, Indonesian Public Health Schools uh, to what? Um, to propose uh, which accreditation body can be uh, acknowledged by the Ministry of Education. So this, this is why I really, really uh, encourage us to improve and then to what to develop our accreditation body so that I, as the chairperson of the Indonesian Public Health School Association, can propose to the government so that the accreditation body for us, for, for, for public health, is APEC accreditation body. That's a what a very what um, urgent one because our ministry really forced us, uh, encouraged us to get international accreditation. Otherwise, um, we are asked to go to um, another uh, accreditation body such as in America or in Europe uh, countries. So this is really what uh, why I really uh, uh, I strongly recommend us to develop our accreditation activity. Thank you, Prof, uh, Prof Agustin. Yeah. Well, actually, what what is stopping you from uh, listing uh, APEC accreditation uh, body in in the list? to propose to your government. Because I think in, in Malaysia, we have done that to, to the Minister of Education. And we have said that we, we, we wish to be, um, uh, we wish to list uh, a PEC accreditation body as one of the accreditation that, that we are looking for apart from others. So uh, I, do, uh, I do understand what, what do you mean by we have to establish. I thought we have already established. We have already established. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I understand. Uh, but in case, in uh, not in case, our uh, Ministry of Education will, uh, how to say, will reconfirm our proposal about the accreditation body. So in this case, we have to be ready. Uh, so Prof. We have to be ready so that if the, uh, there is a, a contact or question or inquiries from our government, so we have all the instruments, all the standards, so that it can convince our government. So that's my concern. So, Prof. Agustin, if you can let us know what kind of information, evidence, or record that would be required, then probably we can start preparing them now and whatever requirement that might be asked. Because it's a, it's a, I mean, definitely we thank you for this opportunity. It should be a wonderful leap forward if we can take this up. Because, I mean, if you can, if the Indonesia recognizes, this would be a great opportunity. If you can let us know what, what are the requirements that we should submit as evidence, so what are the improvements we might have to make, it's fine. I think then we can start yeah. it now. Maybe one thing that we have to, I think we can do in a very short time is uh, to promote ourselves by uh, developing a very nice uh, website because they will they will start from okay. googling yeah. and then trying to find yeah. if there is no information about us in the website so they will not recognize our body so please okay. let's uh, develop the website of our accreditation body yeah. so Good that idea. anytime that they check to the uh, they googling for the uh, our accreditation body then they can get a very nice information about that Idea. So because if they googling for the CC uh, uh, for the CCPH or something like that, America or a European, it's very easy. And then we we put the keywords and then they just pop up. Good but idea. not for APEC. So let's let's develop uh, so that if anytime they put the keywords of APEC accreditation, then they can get uh, very nice information. Can you can you yeah. just provide yeah. me the docu documentation? Yeah, sure, sure. We we'll do. Then, then I'll just put it on the website. We we'll do. I'll create, create, a, create a page for that. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Very easy. I, yeah, I, I, I can, I can do it. I can do it by, by by the end of the conference. Okay. Great. Okay. Good. If no, if, in if, if, if if Indica give me the document to tonight, I can <laughs> do it by the end of the conference. Yeah. Tonight is, will yeah. be very difficult because yeah, <laughs> oh, full time you know, but after, soon after the conference, yes, yes, you can. Yeah. No, I can. Be, okay, this okay. Thanks. Right. Uh, Prof. Agostin, I think you are bringing up a very important point, and I think it's really good if APEC or, or you know your Ministry of Education in Indonesia 
uh, uh, could uh, you know set a precedence where APEC you know is being listed as an accreditation body. And uh, heading this uh, accrediting body is Prof Indica. Perhaps you know whatever information that you think is needed by your Ministry of Education, uh, then Indica can actually fine tune you know our accreditation activities. And then from there, you know, updating our website to to yeah. highlight the accreditation yeah. uh, information in our website. I think I think then that will be a marvelous thing, Prof. Costin. Yeah. So we truly need your help, you know, uh, in, in in getting APAC into the um, uh, your Ministry of Education. Yeah, Prof. Costin. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Victor, okay. maybe it will be nice if in our uh, main menu of our website, you put the menu of accreditation there. Because yes. if we just open the first time uh, yeah. our website, there is no menu of accreditation. Yes, yes. As a main okay, menu, sure. as a main menu. No, no yes. problem. I just have to have the information. Okay. Thank you, thank no you. No information. Yes. Very difficult for me to do it. Yeah. Yes, you. yes. Thank thanks, you. thanks, thanks, uh, Prof. Victor. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, I think we need to move on. Uh, but before we go to number 10, uh, update of the e-conference 2020, if I could invite Professor Colin Baines, uh, uh, to present his journal progress report, please, uh, Prof. Colin. Okay, coming up. Now, I'm trying to share a screen, but it says the host has disabled it. Can I? <laughs> Prof. Colin, it's fine. It's shared, yeah. it's shared uh, but uh, let, let me give you access. Yeah, he, it's, so Colin has to be the host. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think uh, I can't do that. I need to wait for my the IT person. Doesn't seem that I have the privilege. Uh, but I think Fatin has uh, started sharing. Uh, then Prof. Colin can see that. Uh, is is either Fat, uh, Fatin no, or, or no. Baravin? Do you have his uh, presentation? If not, I can I can do I can share it from my end. Uh, he has to grant access, bro. Uh, anyone needs to present, he needs to grant access. Bro. All okay. right, okay. All right, so India has to. What yeah. I, do is, uh, I should be having, don't worry, I should be having. Give me two minutes. Yes. Mm. I can share the screen. Uh, Fatin, you can share. Okay, go ahead. Uh -huh. Please. Prof. Colin, can you see the screen? Yeah, I can see it. Your, your presentation is a bit different to mine, that's all. No. Oh. <laughs> so this is the report, it's not the presentation. No, uh, my presentation is a little you? bit different. Yeah, yeah, correct. Barabi, do you have the presentation? It's Nobody not has it except me. Oh, really? I thought Barabi has got it. Well, it's probably been abbreviated a little bit. Okay, okay. So why don't you share yours? Then has to to unshare the screen so that uh, yeah Colin yeah you have to close that yes. Okay, Colin is yours. No, I still can't. I still can't. Uh... You press you press the green color button. Are you pressing the green color button at the center of your screen? Yeah, I've pressed it and it comes up and it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, All right. Uh, yes, all right. Okay. Host is people participant screen sharing. I also get it. Yeah. Who's the host, sir? Huh? Indica, you're the host. Uh, I am, but I'm, I'm waiting for my technical person because uh, I thought I had the privilege, but uh, no, I had to wait for the other person. He's gone out for it to lie. Oh, mm. you also you also don't have the privilege. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we just hang on for a while. Okay, look, I can I can start by saying yeah. a few things from memory because I can't see anything on my screen except Wai Yun's picture at the present time. Um, oh, and now I've got a, a word that says Helen. <laughs> I can't even... And now I can see Indica's picture. Okay, the Asia-Pacific Journal of Public Health is obviously the uh, the only... English language public health journal in our region, which uh, is worthy of reading. Uh, it's great. Unfortunately, it's not read and cited enough. 
One of our biggest problems is that the impact factor depends on quality publications virtually every year. And the articles which get cited every year are cited a lot are generally uh, good reviews. Now, the last good review that we had, which has been cited, I think, 270 times, was in 2016 from memory. And that's now dropped off the uh, impact factor. So since we haven't had a, a kind of a, a hit, um, what can I say, a top ranking video, top ranking uh, paper, uh, in 2017 and 2018, our our uh, our uh, impact factor has started to drop a little bit. So we need good, relevant impact, good impact factor generating reviews, and then we need APAC members to cite them. Now. Two thirds of the papers that APAC members publish in our journal, they never cite them themselves and they never get their colleagues to cite those papers. So first of all, we've got to encourage all of our members to read the journal. And secondly, we've got to encourage them to cite from our journal. And thirdly, if you publish a paper in our journal, please make sure that you send information about it to other members of your faculty, to your friends, so that they will cite it. And when you write paper number two, please make sure that you cite your paper. Now, I remember it sort of struck me when I first was a visiting professor at Harvard and one of the colleagues that I'm sharing an office with prepared a paper for uh, submission to a journal. And as part of the process, they had to uh, send that. Aha, uh -huh, here we are. You, you can now. I can now. You can, yes. I can find it. Great, well done. Okay, here we go, right. Anyway, I've been talking. As you can see, our impact factors fluctuated a little bit. In 2018, it was fine. 2019, it dropped a bit. And that's because we lost our biggest uh, review. Um, you can see that, that uh, we're not doing too badly as far as a regional journal is concerned, but we would like to be to be higher. If you look at the five year impact factor down the bottom, you can see that it's 1.5, which is not too bad. Submissions this year to date, so far we've had 1,085 and I counted up the other day and I've read so far, I've so far read 860 of them, which is why it takes me two or three days a week to, to work on, on the journal. Uh, this year we've, According to SAGE, we've got an acceptance ratio of around about 13%. That's not very high. I'd like to have an, uh, an acceptance ratio of around about 50%, but there are two problems. First of all, we're limited in the space that we can, we can have because we can't afford to pay for a, a thicker journal. And secondly, the quality of the papers is not all that good. Many of them are small cross-sectional surveys. Uh, we ask our students what we think of this or what we think of that. Uh, we get things like internet surveys submitted, which really it's hard to know exactly what they mean. These are the countries that they come from. And as you can see, we've got a pretty good balance of APAC and other countries from within the region published a couple of supplement issues 
uh, in 2019, neither of which have been very well cited uh, by the authors of those papers. So here are the top 10 cited articles uh, from recent years. But you can see that the number of sites up here is the top was 10, which is really not very good at all. We really need to make sure that the authors send that information to other people so that it gets cited a lot by others and by themselves. So if we look at the top citations over the years, first of all, good reviews are cited the most. Secondly, climate change is the top subject of concern in our journal. That's the thing that gets cited most with the highest rankings. And thirdly, as I said before, the most highly cited paper was published in 2016. To a certain extent, that's because it takes time to be cited in, in public health, but it also means we haven't, we haven't had any really sort of crash hot reviews in the last few years. Supplements are not cited much, which is a big disappointment. Why would you bother paying to put a supplement in our journal and they're not citing the papers that you put in it? Well, that's what seems to happen. The exceptions have been the supplement on the Fukushima accident, which has been well cited. The one on climate change, which has been well cited. And then I think maybe 15, 20 years ago, we published a, a supplement on cardiovascular disease in the Middle East, and that was well cited. These actually are the top cited papers, and uh, the citations in this case are from Web of Science rather than from Google Scholar or one of the other databases, which gives you a higher number. So you can see my paper on long-term public health benefits of breastfeeding has had 111 citations. That's why, I mean, when I commented about the top one in the last three years, there's only been 10 citations. We need our authors to get on with it and make sure that they're cited uh, widely. And you can see the other ones, uh, got when I choose paper on on uh, spinal cord injuries and helmets. And then most of the rest are on, on uh, climate change. Why fewer citations? Well, one of the reasons is that we are facing extensive competition from open access journals. If you search for a paper, you can find a free copy in an open access journal on the internet. The second link seems to be that APAC members don't have as much access to databases. I mean, they should have access to our journal. If they pay their fees, it should be free. Uh, but I don't know, they don't seem to. Um, oh, there's a number of papers. Full text downloads, you can see that the downloads are up again this year. The most downloaded articles, uh, the Fukushima one at the top, um, but that didn't get quite the, the number of citations as the second paper. Um, I just want to go through quickly some of the general requirements. The last couple of years, we've introduced the requirement of three dot points at the beginning, describing what we already know, and three dot points what this article adds. And authors have told me that they are, these provisions are quite popular. We've also been publishing more short communications and letters to the editor, particularly this year when we've had probably, I don't know, it gets out of control, four or 500 submissions on the COVID pandemic. And most of those don't warrant full papers because they'll be out of date in a couple of months. But for the record, we've been putting them in the journal as short communications and letters to the editor. And so they're worth considering if you've got something of interest to people that's still scientifically valid and you want to get it published as quickly as we can. 
remember that we always follow international requirements, particularly the consort guidelines for randomized controlled trials and PRISMA for reviews. Now, people just don't bother to read our journal or to read the instructions to the authors and they send in articles which are not conforming to our requirements. They get them rejected or they get sent back and asked to try again. English remains a big problem. We cannot have a journal that publishes articles which are not up to scratch and it's expensive to get uh, articles edited um, so I encourage everybody to make sure that your staff edit the English correctly. You've got to follow established epidemiological designs, small cross-sectional surveys, uh, internet surveys, open label uh, controlled trials and things like this are not really uh, of good enough quality to publish. The reason is we want articles which will actually make a difference, which people can use to change public health policy and improve the lives of our citizens. But the simplest thing to do is at least read articles in the journal in the last few years so that your article uh, conforms to the correct format. Got to remember that our journal is for the Asia Pacific region and that it's about public health. We don't want how to do a surgical operation in, uh, I don't know, one of the states of the, one of the cities in the United States or, <clears throat> or something like that. In our journal, <clears throat> as in most public health journals, we would give preference to randomized controlled trials, to <coughs> excuse me, systematic reviews, and then to cohort studies and large data set analyses. These are papers that will be, lead to improvements in the health of all of our citizens, including disadvantaged and rural groups, and help us to achieve the APAC objectives. Time to the first decision. This is what Sage thinks we are doing. I suspect it's a little bit longer than this, but we do our best and it's been a difficult year. It's been a very difficult year, but we would like reviewers to uh, review papers quickly. Uh, if you can turn around a paper for us in less than a week, that's the maximum time that you should take. We also want all the executive board members to volunteer to review a couple of papers in the next 12 months and to do it within a week. That way we'll be able to improve our turnaround time. So please let the journal office know what areas of expertise you would be able to uh, review papers in and with a statement that you will do it quickly, like within a week. Um, once it gets through us, it goes to Sage where it's typeset and put uh, up on the uh, website. And that's the amount of time that it's taking at the moment. We've got a public health special issue coming up next year. And I think there's still a, a need for a few more articles for that. COVID manuscripts, as I said, we've had four or 500 of those. Um, it's been really an interesting activity to read them all, but also very time consuming. Uh, I don't think this is relevant because I think that you've got to keep your self citation rate below 15%. But the way this has been calculated is incorrect because it includes editorials and a few other things. So I don't think we've got a problem at the present time. Um, there we are. That's that's as far as as we uh, as I wanted to discuss with you. So thank you to everybody who's contributed articles. Thank you to everybody who has undertaken reviews. 
and thank you very much to the office staff in KL who have worked so hard to keep our journal afloat during the pandemic. Thank you so much, Prof. Colin. Uh, uh, just to just to add on, uh, just one thing uh, for the members here. Uh, we still have problems getting reviewers, so we are just wondering whether uh, you, you know uh, the ESCO members here, or even tomorrow in the AGM, whether you can help us with the review. You know, just perhaps reviewing one or two articles per year. I think that will be extremely you know uh, useful for us. Uh, so it's a big yes here. I don't know. We need we need more than one or two. Okay. Yeah. Colin, so, I, have, I have reviewed two already, so so I have I have oh, fulfilled my I fulfilled my. Uh, no, no, no. Colin said more than two. Prof. No, Colin said only, two. President said two. If you've only reviewed two papers a week, that, two papers a week, then I'd be very happy. But two papers a year. Oh yeah. goodness me. Okay. So. Okay, uh, two papers a week. Yeah. So no, no, okay. One a month would be fine. One a month. Okay. Okay, right. So be prepared. The articles will come your way. Yeah. Uh, are there any comments for Prof. Collins, please? Okay. Well, how how can we Im improve our citation? Is it is it the issue open access or is it the issue that is uh, we cannot get people people cannot find our article? Okay. Well, there are sometimes, sometimes <coughs> people cannot things. find our article. We can make it an open access journal, but that means each APAC publisher would have to pay, say, 2000 US to get their paper published. We, I don't think that that's realistic at the present time. Second thing is that most authors, probably 80% of them, never cite their own paper. So at least you can cite your own paper. And secondly, you should encourage all the other members of your school or department to cite your papers. And thirdly, you should send a copy of it to all of your colleagues around the world, wherever you did your education, wherever you know another APAC member who is working on the same problem, you can send them a paper and perhaps encourage them to, uh, to cite it as well. Can we, can, can we ask people to write uh, a short uh, review of the article in APAC website? linking to their article so that, or someone do that, so that it'll be much more, there'll be much more profit, much more people looking at the article because sometimes people don't go to read it. Sure, that's that's really good. I mean, yeah. they tell me there are things like Facebook and whatever, but I, I'm too old, I don't know about them. I, I mean, but there seems you, to be good to be promote things. First thing, first thing you need to write a short because people don't read the, the full article. They, the abstract doesn't cover, cover there's that, the abstract is very funny. It doesn't read. It's not. It's not for reader. Read. It's not for non scientists to read. It's only for scientists to read. So if someone put it in a plain language, and then you'll be cited more. Okay, that's a good idea. Yep. Any further comments? Maybe ba Baira can help. Yeah. To yeah, actually, Prof Victor, we are doing that. The editor's choice at the moment. So we mm -hmm. have uh, someone, uh, Dr. Siti Norasa, who actually, uh, we have Prof Noran to select a few. Yes, Prof Yuli? Yes, yes, we have that. Uh, so, um, uh, so we will send a few interesting articles, yeah. shortlisted by Prof Noran, and then she will synthesize into a layman language. And then we will promote on our Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. And you know, you, 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 put it, you put it on the website. From the website, then you can, you can link it to the Twitter or Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. the idea is Twitter and Facebook will get lost. A website oh, people okay. can still come back and then we can, can still find. When they go when they when they find, they basically find the thing on the website. Yeah. So you send to the website and then and then and then you you link your link it to your Twitter and your and your Facebook. That's how it's supposed yeah. to be done, not the other way around. Okay. I think I think one of my comments is that in terms of um, people people need to do self-promotion of their papers. Um, I learned I learned from Philip. Yes. Okay. Now, one of the questions is when is once a year? There's one month is open access, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I think it's in April. Okay. So my suggestion is when that is coming up, that the authors get a prompt. Now is the time to send out links through Facebook um, messages to your friends because they can download it and see your paper for free. 
Yes, I do. That's what I was going to do before. Uh, I, I had planned to do a promotion on a couple of my uh, um, uh, journal papers, but I, I didn't know when the um, the month was to do that. If we could get a prompt um, leading up to it, maybe some ideas um, of how to promote your paper, like have a of a photo if your if your paper is about how to make people happy with Smarties, teach oh, I know. epidemiology, I know then um, I've got photos and I'll, I'll send out a link in that photos to my paper. Um, but if, if it's just going to, you know, access is closed, then that's a problem. But I, I prefer to do it on the month of open access. So uh, that's my recommendation is ask people, maybe we get some ideas together uh, leading up to that month of um, how you can promote your paper. Sure, sure. Another, another question. We push, ask everyone to push forward during that month. It reminds Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, another question. Uh, some, some journals actually allow pre-publication to be shared. Does uh, Sage allow that? Pre-publication? That means the pre-formatted pre -formatted version to be, to be shared on, on your own website. Uh, no. Yeah, you can, you can put up a pre-submission version. You shouldn't put up the fully formatted. Yeah, basically uh, just just the one. In what yeah. in what document you can you can put it up? Is it okay? You can put it up in yeah, an institutional prints. repository. Yeah. Right. Okay. People so, have asked me recently about some of these preprint journals that are coming up. The early early but they're called. I've forgotten now what they're called. Um, I regard them as prior publication. Yeah. So if you put your paper up on one of these unrefereed journals, bad luck, you're not going to get it in our journal. Sure. Okay, any other views? If not, thank you so much, Prof. Colin. Thank you. Uh, no, um, can, I just, can I just add one thing? Yes. I'm really sorry I can't come to Colombo and enjoy a, a fish <laughs> oh. curry because one of the... <laughs> One of the highlights of APAC conferences has always been the great food. And one thing about one thing about Taipei is that they have absolutely delicious food. And when I get to KL, uh, Wai Yun knows where to buy the best crab. And I've also had some delicious meals in Indonesia. So this COVID is a terrible thing. It's keeping me from my good food. We miss all the food. So, right, okay. Uh, I think, yeah, uh, you see, I think you have some questions here. Okay, yeah, you see, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the opportunity, Prof. Law. I think, uh, we would be very appreciative if the journal, Asia Pacific Journal of Public Health, can grant access to its member, Prof. So, it have like a privilege if that's possible, so we can kind of uh, promoted to our student and also our uh, staff because uh, sometimes what the student search is the one that is uh, open access as we mentioned and if we only have once um, what do you call it, once a year then that's uh, limit the opportunity so okay uh, uh, yeah. actually um, uh, all member institutions have access to the journal uh, the link is actually sent by sage and the link is actually sent to your dean. So it's up to your dean to actually circulate that to all your students or academic. And uh, it is uh, what Prof. Philip has mentioned just now, it's just a, that is different from, from, from membership uh, uh, access uh, to the journal. What Prof. Philip has mentioned just now, it's every year Sage open one month free open access of our journal to the public. Yeah, okay. so what, but what you are saying is all member institutions has got yes. access to the journal. Yeah, and you must oh. make use of that, yeah. Uh, yes, thank you. So we can uh, distribute and send it to our students within our- Yes, you have to, uh, yeah, it's always forwarded to the Dean. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, may I add to it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, every time uh, Sage will ask us the list of uh, members uh, for, yes. them to, uh, for them to send the link. So I think um, usually University of Langa is always there. Yeah. So you get a link from your dean, all right? Okay, right. So thank you so much uh, for everything. Let us now move on. Now, there is a particular report that I've just missed 
and that's the Treasury report. I think it's important for the ECM to go through this before it's presented tomorrow at the AGM. Could I now invite Professor Albert Cho, please? Could you present your Treasury's report, please? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, First, I, I, I initially anticipate that the membership income will decline as a result of COVID. Please see my report in page 42. But right now, we have uh, around uh, 58,000 uh, member, uh, membership fee received uh, this year uh, by the end of the November. That is very good. Oh, I think this is a great job. I will send the APEC uh, secretary office so doing a great job this time. And uh, also we, this year we host uh, at least four virtual meeting in total and uh, good attendance for all of our active members. So uh, at the right moment, in total of our count, uh, it, around have 363 uh, US dollars, uh, quite good for our account. So it's a very uh, healthy financial situation for support in the near future our uh, activity, such as our uh, strategy for the education program that is proposed from Augustine. And uh, uh, in the near future, I think uh, we can propose more, more uh, online or, or virtual activity uh, through our uh, financial status. And uh, in the page 43, I propose uh, uh, 2021 the budget for your proof and uh, the total expenditure is uh, is uh, expenditure is around uh, 98,000 uh, this is uh, roughly uh, uh, same with our uh, the 2020 and uh, uh, each year uh, the annual memory payment fee is around seven Seventy, but this year uh, uh, nearly sixty. I think it's quite good. So uh, I will thank the, our president and the the, the Masana for your great job. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Cho. Yeah. So that, that does that mean that uh, the usual budget for APEC Secretariat Office and for uh, uh, Colum University Colombo's uh, aggregation, um, what do you call that? Uh, Normal normal expenditure can be approved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I ask? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, yes. We we already submit and uh, the conference report with the sending the money for, for the seeding money and the ex benefit ten percent to APEC account. Did you receive? Because I I was waiting for the confirmation. Okay. Uh, and let me uh, let me reconfirm and then send you a send you an email. Okay. okay. Because I, I now have the detail. Yeah, I, I will tell you. Okay. Future. You remember that you had it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Sorry. <laughs> I was worried. <laughs> Uh, actually, Prof. City, I think uh, my my office uh, we had we had replied to you, but then of course uh, you would I mean it would be better if you have the reply from the treasurer as well. Right, right, right. right. But don't worry. Uh, we we acknowledge that you have sent the uh, you have returned the seed money to APEC. and and the ten percent benefit as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank you very much. Seven hundred. I think you are the only you are the only host who had written <laughs> the the. Yeah, you, you are the role model for the conference hall. Oh, I see. So, Prof. <laughs> Indica, you have to follow yeah. suit. So, Prof. Indica, you have to follow suit. <laughs> okay, uh, uh, just a request, uh, Prof. Cho from the uh, editorial office here. Uh, we are just wondering when you transfer the money uh, from Taiwan to 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 New Zealand uh, office here the editorial, the journal editorial, would you mind sending it during July or August, please? Because sometimes it affects uh, the salary of Baravi and Helen. So yeah, if yeah. you send it okay, much okay, earlier, no. right at the end of the year. Yeah, okay. July I, or I, August. I, yeah, we okay, actually no did that. Thank, yeah, thank yeah, you. Okay. okay, guys, uh, let us now move on because we need to finish the session by 3.30. We have got two more um, items. Mm -hmm. Prof, yeah, I yeah. think uh, Prof Victor wants to ask something. All right, the, uh, August, about the Augustine proposal just now about the move, we need a budget for that. So if that if that proposal is approved, then we need a budget. For that. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, Victor, you have to apply for the budget. I think. No, uh, but uh, is it approved or not? First of all, is the move once it's approved, then we can apply for budget. Uh, I have not seen any budget from Paul Fagosin. No, I think what he's saying is that whether that MOOC program is um, approved or otherwise by the committee. Uh, I, I, I think we need a bit more detail from Prof. Agostin as to how he's going to implement that uh, before we can approve any amount of money. Uh, so unless and until we see the detailed proposal, I think that would be because he has proposed a lot of strategies there. So as to which one we should prioritize, uh, what APEC should do, and then she comes up with specific uh, budget for specific strategies. I think then the committee, you know, uh, will see it and approve later, uh, but yes. not at this uh, meeting, uh, Prof. Victor. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, can we now move on to the next two item? And Prof. Indika, would you like to give us an update on the coming APEC conference, please? Yes. Uh, first, let me share the screen. Uh, Prof. Lo, uh... Yeah. I'm sorry. I think uh, uh, you have missed uh, the the secretary, the secretary or admin uh, vice president's report. But then I think the thing that I want to highlight is pertaining to the three application for new memberships because oh, this yeah. is presented tomorrow. So I would like um, the 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 committee uh, uh, to so so called uh, endorse uh, the University of Sri. Sri Lanka, Sir John Defense University. Okay, sorry. It's very difficult for you. Yeah, and and then that from Betty from Taiwan. Yeah, National Chung Kong University. Yes, I think we had received the documents, and and it's highly suggested by both regional directors. Yes, for the committee to so called endorse this. Yes, I'm for it. Yeah. All right. Can we all endorse it so that we can carry out the inauguration tomorrow? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Next. Do you have no, uh, yeah. Indica? Yes. Uh, yeah. I I move in. The, will you need a uh, representative of National Chung Kong University? Uh, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Shall I, shall I come into that? Uh, uh, it's uh, when I'm presenting. Definitely something that we want to discuss. Yes. Uh, shall I? Uh, I'm going to present the full, full program. Then we can discuss that as well. Is that okay, Betty? Uh... No, what I'm telling is tomorrow we are going to have the general assembly during the ceremony induction will take place. So what we will do is we will read the citation, the certificate from here. Then uh, we'll put that on the screen. Then someone uh, from there maybe could be on camera uh, from the university. Yeah. I am not so sure because this is the last minute. Okay. Uh... Then, then you can come on camera. That's fine. I mean, on behalf of the university, uh, then we can not like you have accepted the certificate. Yeah, anyway, uh, either me or the representative fine, of National Chung Kong University can show up tomorrow morning online. But if it's not from them, their person, I suggest in the next real conference, we can do the induction again. Uh, up to you. I mean, if you do the induction tomorrow, then it's easier for that because they have more time. I mean, they will have one year, they can pay the membership for free and then go ahead. So in that way, it might be better in that way, but up to you. I mean, since it is accepted today, uh, we can do the induction tomorrow. But if you think it needs to be done physically, I'm okay. We can arrange it virtually if you want. Because mm -hmm. even, even some of the medals will be offered virtually, say Prof. Trimatiana's medal, and Jimba, all the medals, they will be awarded virtually. Okay, they uh, are ready to pay the membership fee already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, if they uh, can show up tomorrow online, I'm not so sure. I have to contact them now and see if I can get an answer. Is that okay? Okay, Betty. Yeah, if, if, if they are not ready to be inducted tomorrow, then we can do it, uh, do it in uh, yes. October. Yes. Maybe yes. next time. Yes. Yeah. No, but but he, he, but he yeah. is already a member once he pays. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So let me Wonderful. know. Uh, okay. Let me know in advance because then we need to arrange the procedures from here uh, with it, do it online or not. Let me know. Okay. I will email you. Yeah, I will wait. email you later. So, 
Right. So now actually we have started the conference. Uh, yesterday we had a very successful scientific writing workshop uh, and uh, then both uh, Prof. Colin, Prof. Vayun, they were resource persons. Uh, Prof. Vayun, you want to say any words? Because there were very positive comments about yesterday's workshop, online workshop. Yes, uh, in, indeed. Uh, we have three uh, presenters, Prof. Colin, myself, and uh, Prof. Uh, Perella, the former past president of, of uh, SLME. And uh, I, 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 I must say that, you know, the presence uh, of the participants are really good and the questions raised. We have almost about 100 of them attending right from beginning until the end. Yes. And the questions are, you know, uh, rather stimulating. And I think they wanted more, the participants wanted more. And so I think it's really good that uh, I've also mentioned that every year we have this uh, writing workshop. So, uh, yep, I, I think it's uh, very well received indeed. And today we had the early career network again very successful. Here also about 90 attended right throughout, and uh, resource persons were uh, Kremlin was there, Kremlin, uh, Don Presino, and uh, then uh, Koji Kanda, uh, all previous uh, members of AFAC uh, at, the, at the ECN level. And it was very successful and uh, very well received as well. And uh, tomorrow we are going to have the general assembly again in the same venue, but in a very ceremonial way with limited participation from here. It will be hybrid meeting. So it will be starting tomorrow morning. And uh, tonight we are going to have the global network meeting uh, where our top leaders of different global public health associations are joining in. And uh, on Tuesday, we'll be starting the ceremonial inauguration of the conference with several items. Again, it's going to be a mix of both cultural as well as the ceremonial items. And the keynote address will be by Professor Malik Piris because the current situation, he's someone who has pioneered the SARS COVID research uh, from Hong Kong. He will be the, uh, the virtual chief guest and the keynote. Several top level resource persons have already joined with the conference like Sir Michael Mahamad, uh, Prof. Srinath Reddy, and uh, then Professor Malik Piris and many of you as resource persons or chairs. So it's going to be a really good conference, public health conference. And uh, already the re registration is close upon uh, 300, but when we add the resource persons and the executives and the General Assembly, I suppose it might go up to 500. And this time our main target is participation. So we have kept the registration very low and we are encouraging people to participate online. And uh, we have made the program very interactive uh, so that uh, basically uh, most of the activities are not uh, not only didactic lectures, but a lot of interaction and high tech is utilized very much. It is not only a Zoom meeting, we are combining the face to face video conferencing, Zoom with 3D virtual reality. For example, if you take the photo exhibition, that will actually be conducted as a, a 3D exercise. I'll just try to show it to you. Yes, uh, the oral presentations and the photo exhibition will be conducted as 3D, 3D virtual reality. I'm just showing you a video how it would be like. So it's virtual immersion. And this, this is a real photo exhibition, the video of the photo exhibition in a virtual environment. I'm just running the video, but you can basically go through this environment and navigate and see the photos. Same with the presentations, uh, that's the oral and poster presentations. In will be in a 3D virtual environment, but your presentations will be in, on face to face. So no need to worry that you have to go through the high tech, but uh, these areas will be high tech. The, the, for the first time, the, uh, the photo competition will happen like a high tech 3D virtual immersive experience. Same with the oral presentations. Yeah. So then the closing ceremony, uh, again, very ceremonial with the handing out the next conference. Uh, so we are looking forward to a very exciting conference. Thank you. Over, Prof. Ayun. Uh, do you want to walk through with us the program right from the opening I, I ceremony? Can, I, can, you... I can, I can, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I will yeah. do that. And who, who will be the VIP attending and what not? I will do that. I will do that, certainly. And also the awards, the APEC yes. awards, yes. how we are going right. to give it to them. We'll yeah. do. We'll do. Yes, I'm going to do it now. Just very quickly. 
so I am starting with actually eighth because uh, now we have almost finished other areas and tonight we'll be having the uh, global network and the general assembly. So tomorrow it will be the general assembly, same venue in the same ceremonial way with all of you. I actually, I have sent profile pictures to all of you. I'm very happy that most of you have used them so that it will give the kind of international flavor with your flags and everything because we, we don't, we will not be able to have the physical flags. And the dean's meeting again in the same evening, uh, chaired by the president and then the dean of our faculty. And then moving into the, the actual conference, the real conference on Tuesday, starting with ceremonial inauguration, starting with our time 8.30. There will be a lot of Sri Lankan cultural items embedded within this. So to give the flavor of the country, because many won't be able to attend online. So national anthem and there's our traditional lighting of oil lamp, again, a ceremonial thing will come addressed by me and the president and then the message by the WHO regional di director and the keynote address. Then uh, there'll be some Sri Lankan and then the international musical interlude and then award of medals. The medals are awarded to Dr. Palita Bacon. Uh, so the citation will be read. Now the citation will, will be read by Dr. Rasia Fense. Masamine Chemba, citation read by Prof. Ayun Lo, so I'll be sending you the citation. Prof. Senaviratna uh, will be awarded the medal from here. And Prof. Trimatiana, citation read by Prof. Augustine. So when you are doing this, it would be really nice if you can join from your venues with videos like what you are doing right now. Uh, for example, when Prof. Trimatiana is uh, felicitated, you can switch on your video from your end, maybe with some of the participants from your faculty so that we can respect her in that way as well. Uh, same uh, so, with so Indica, so yes. uh, the citation are actually already prepared and you'll yes. be sending it to us, is it? Yes, yes, citation already prepared. We'll be sending okay. it to both of you. So yeah. uh, when we are announcing it from our end, then uh, just a matter of we'll be giving you the, the host, right? So can you can just read it from there. And the okay. camera will be on you. Camera means the yeah. okay. uh, will be on you. Video right. will be on you. All Same right. with Augustine. And yeah. uh, uh, tourist board is working with us because we want to give promotion to the country and encourage tourism. Theme, pre theme presentation also very artistic, cultural presentation, highlighting public health aspects. So those will be very unique kind of aspects. And then moving into the first symposium, the regional perspective uh, of COVID-19 country presentation. Uh, Ananda Vijay Vikram, I think, why you, you know, is the chief physician related to infectious disease. Uh, we are awaiting confirmation from Malaysia and uh, from Hong Kong, we have got the confirmation and Thailand also, uh, we have got uh, one confirmation, uh, I think from the Ministry of Health. Uh, the, uh, but Taiwan, uh, it would be good if you can have a presentation on Taiwan also. Mm. That's, uh, I know that's quite late in the day, but since Taiwan has done very well, it would be quite nice if, 40, if there's any possibility of having a pre uh, presentation. Betty, Prof Cho, what do you think? If you can get the DG, if you can get DG Wong on board for a very short, yeah. very yeah. short presentation, that would be really great. Because it would mm -hmm. be nice to, uh, Prof Colin Beans, yeah. his name is not appearing, but he's doing the Australia country presentation. Australia country presentation by Prof. Pauline. So we have five at the moment. Uh, uh -huh. Ten presentation, mm -hmm. we have one more slot. You mean symposium number one? Symposium number one, yes, please, yeah. From 11 to 12.30? Yeah, Sri Lankan time, yes. Yeah. And you want to invite DG Wong now? If, if you can get DG Wong, <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> <please. laughs> oh, I'm not so sure. Yeah. Or anyone, Betty, anybody. Anyone, Betty, H.I.? Uh, uh, Betty yeah. did a very nice presentation for Japan's conference. Me? <laughs> Me? Yeah, your presentation for Japan was uh, very nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, you want me to talk about COVID-19? Yes, yes, the, the country situation, because Taiwan has done so well related to COVID-19 and it would be worthwhile experience for others to learn also. So um, what day is it? Tomorrow? Tomorrow, no, day after tomorrow, day after. Oh, no. oh, oh the day after tomorrow. You have 48 yeah. hours. 
Okay, okay. let me check with DG Wong. Okay, okay, yeah. It's a, it's a very short presentation, maximum five to 10 minutes, just to tell the country situation only. Only five to 10 minutes? Yeah, yeah, very short presentation, just oh. to tell the country situation. Yeah, I had another meeting, but okay, I can, yeah. Or if DG Wong cannot make it, and since Jim Bar recommend me. Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Okay, I can okay, do I can. it. Yeah. All right. All right. Great, fantastic. Thank you. Then a panel discussion again, new frontiers in diagnosis of management. Uh, so there will be discussion about the, the situation, regional situation by the WHO representative and the COVID vaccine and the immunological basis and challenges in therapeutics. Again, top level resource persons uh, from UK mainly. And uh, these areas, lunch break, there will be a, where we will be going through the 3D virtual reality. So you can encourage the participants and your colleagues to go into those areas and enjoy. All these will be 3D and this again a cultural team presentation. And new technologies in COVID-19. Again, discussing about surveillance system uh, and uh, basically about digital surveillance systems. And next day, starting with main, mainly Malaysian from a uh, university, uh, Monash University, Tintin Su, and uh, basically sharing about uh, demographic surveillance systems and NCDs. And Walter Patrick Memorial Lecture, this is what we are looking forward to, done by Professor uh, Colin Beans and chaired by HY and Bruce, because you have been very close friends of Walter. So both of you will be chairing. And uh, Walter's brother uh, is will be there in Sri Lanka, Angelo Patrick. He'll be coming with the family for this special occasion. Angelo will be there. Angelo is Walter's younger brother. He'll be there for the symposium. And then uh, health research in new normal, where you can discuss about the different different research aspect. And uh, many, many uh, APAC resource persons are there. And others are also very much encouraged to join this symposium. So this because this symposium will be will be very much APAC oriented. Panel discussion, just about panel discussion. No, no formal presentation. No formal presentations. Just a panel discussion. And a global health symposium uh, organized by Don Eliso again. Top level people, including Sharon Frail and Srinath Reddy, will be there. And uh, this is going to be very special, the WHO, because uh, they want to celebrate the universal health coverage uh, and the resource persons will be the regional and Sri, regional and Sri Lankan experts on uh, different, different areas on universal health care. And uh, then the international experts will be Srinath Reddy, Sir Michael Mahmoud, and uh, Dr. Sharon Freel, all, all top experts related to the, uh, related to social determinants of health. And then Sir Michael Mahmoud will be doing the social determinants of health guest lecture. And the, finally, the organizing committee, the next, there will be the concluding and the award of, uh, sir, awarding different certificates for the winners like EC and so on and so forth. Then handing over the conference to Indonesia, where we are expecting a presentation uh, from uh, Prof. Santi Martini and um, uh, maybe Prof. Augustine regarding the next conference. So that's the program. So right. very much Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, are there any comments? Uh, we have got one more last item to go. Yeah, I think these are all very clear to us. So uh, tomorrow will be the Dean's meeting at the AGM and then following that, the conference starts. Yeah, yeah. and Dean, Dean's meeting. Yes, yes. And day okay, after thank the you so much. Yes, the day after will be the actual conference. Yeah. Okay, then thank you so much, uh, Prof. Nika. Thank you. And thank you for Bye. all the support that was given to achieve this within short time. Yes. Okay, now the last item on the agenda is can I invite Professor Santi Martini uh, to present to us on the next year's conference? Yeah, thank you, Prof. Lo. Good afternoon, Prof. Lo, as yes. President APA and Prof. Agustin as President-elect APAC and Honorable Executive Council Member of APAC. Uh, I'm really glad to invite it in this meeting and also to meet you all again. 
uh, although virtually, because uh, if meet you all, you all as a charger for me, especially as a public health teacher. I am a prof law and a honorable executive mem council member of APA. I am here not alone. I am accompanied by Prof. Tri Martiana as a head of a steering committee and also Professor Nyoman as head of organizing committee and Dr. Trias as deputy of organizing committee and also Dr. Arif and Dr. Haryo as a organizing committee team. At this moment, we would like to give uh, our progress report related to our preparation as a host for 52nd APA conference in 2021. Based on our previous meeting that uh, uh, the ECM uh, has been decided in the next APA conference in 2021 will will be held in October 25th until 29th. And for the TIL update uh, report, Dr. Trias as Deputy of Organizing Committee is going to deliver of the progress report. Please, Dr. Trias. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Santi. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Honorable Council Member of APAC, we would like to report uh, the progress for the 52nd Asia Pacific Academic Consortium for Public Health APAC Conference that was scheduled on uh, 2021. Um, can we share the screen? So we have a couple of time of postponement and we all already have um, confirmation from uh, the president of APAC that we will held the 52nd APAC 2021 on the 27th and 28th of 2021. And as part of our um, contribution in terms of uh, how Indonesian usually have uh, international conference. This is the first time that we want to have our APA conference to be indexed uh, in Scopus Journal. And we have a big hope that the Asia Pacific Journal of Public Health will be part of our uh, collaborating uh, journals. And the conference itself is going to be on uh, five days is executive council meeting on 25th October 2021. And then for the pre-conference and general assembly, president and dean's meeting, as well as a welcome dinner is going to be on the 26th. As for the uh, main conference, it's going to be held on 27 October 2021 to 28 October 2021. And we hope that the COVID pandemic is going to be uh, slowing down at this time, but we are planning to have both uh, virtual and on-site tour, as well as the conference is going to be planned to have a virtual or online and also offline, because we already have uh, agreement with uh, Sangrila as the venue for the uh, APAC 52nd conference. Uh, we already invited total 23 speakers, mostly from uh, the APA committee members, and also five speakers for the pre-conference workshop. This is the update for uh, important date. Pak Dani, next slide, please. Um, okay, yeah. So uh, for the important dates, uh, the call for paper is going to be January 1st to March 31st. And then we have uh, early bird until June 30th. Uh, as of uh, 1st December, 
we have 132 registered abstract already, mostly from Indonesia, but also some of uh, our um, colleague from other countries. For the registered participant, we already have 200. And we already confirmed the venue is going to be in Sangrila Hotel and Surabaya. And for the pre-conference workshop as well as Dean's meeting is going to be held in Kampus C Universitas Erlangga. For the workshop session, we have some uh, law and ethic in public health is uh, one of the main um, the main theme and then scientific writing and publication early career network policy analysis in public health and also quantitative occupational risk assessment occupational need assessment detoxification for chemical hazard and then for plenary session we have uh, the prospect of fourth industrial revolution in healthcare making technology in the fourth industrial revolution era 4.0 to foster health and prosperity, university and leadership law in artificial intelligence driven world. And then we have a couple of uh, parallel session and also uh, topics for oral and partial presentation. We have around um, 47 team with nine nine team is designated towards uh, the COVID-19 uh, problem. And the target for our APAC 20, uh, 52nd APAC in 2021 to have 400 attendance for offline. This is, we already uh, plan with, uh, align with the protocol for COVID-19. In Sangrila, we can have around uh, 400 uh, maximum and then for online participant we targeted for 700 participant as of now we have some source of budget from uh, AFAC office Universitas Erlangga also it's going to be related to registration fee from Ministry of Health and other resources and some of uh, confirmed partnership are from Union Ministry of Health UNFPA WHO Indonesia, CDC, John Hopkins University, Latrobe University, Vitamin Angels, and UNICEF. Uh, thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen. If there's any suggestion, please contact our uh, head of the organizing committee, 52nd APAC uh, 2021, Universitas Arlangga Surabaya, Dr. Nyoman Anita Damayanti, and you can email at nyoman.ed at fkm.una.ac.id. Thank you very much. Monggo, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, are there any comments from the floor? Yeah, Prof. Aris, I'm just wondering, because this is a hybrid conference, right? The online and the offline. Yes. Uh, so, will the fees be the same? Pardon? Uh, will the registration fees be the same? Offline uh, and the offline? The registration fee for online and offline are different. All right, okay. Different, yes. So okay. we're going to have a different uh, platform yeah. for offline. Is already settled that we have uh, around nine uh, parallel session. For the yeah. online, we still plan uh, ahead related to uh, how many participants that we are targeting yeah. 700. So. Uh, yeah. In the future, we're going to have uh, more detail about that. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further comments? Yeah. Uh, if there are no comments regarding the conference, can I ask everyone to uh, switch on their videos? Uh, we want to get the we want to get the group photo now. Yes. Uh, Philip, your video, and CCHP team, all others are fine. And uh, Augustine, Prof. Augustine, your video. Yeah, CACHP, we can't see the faces. Prof. Becky, Prof. Yeah. Show. Yeah, Betty, we can see. I can see. Oh. I can see. 
uh, Augustine, I can't see. Prof. Augustine, can you? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, video on Prof. Augustine. Uh, we are in Taiwan, Thailand. Uh, only Thailand. Augustine. Prof. Augustine. Prof. Augustine, can we have a video on, please? Can you have the video for the? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Bruce, nice smile, Bruce. Great. Put put your best smile. Okay. Great. Taken one. Put your best smile again. Two. Great. Done. Thank you. Thank you so much. So this ends the meeting and we will all meet again tomorrow, you know, at the AGM. Hello, hello. Yes. Excuse me. Uh, yes. I would like, yeah. Thank you, Prof. I would like to remind Dr. Indika about uh, our, yeah, our participant. I sent an email to Dr. Indika that we have 10 participants or 12 Five participants. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we are waiting for the link now. Maybe you yes, can. Yes, Maybe yeah. uh, tomorrow we can send uh, the. By, by tomorrow. By yeah, tomorrow. No, the registration. Link to everyone okay. and for all of you. Uh, for all of you, registration is complimentary uh, yeah. for the exco. I'll be sending the links for both days. By tomorrow, it will be sent. But anyhow, please send me the email to me again so that I uh, I can double check it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. For us, it's going to be free. Is it? Thank Sorry? you, Pablo. Okay. Right. Thank you so much uh, um, to the Indonesian team. Thank you. Right. If there are no further comments, um, I shall end this meeting now because it's already, you know, quarter to seven Malaysian time. Yeah. So thank you so much for all your input and uh, very good uh, discussion indeed for the ACM meeting. And I shall see you all tomorrow. All right. Okay. Bye now. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye Nusya Falanga. Bye. Bye. See Bye. you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Taiwan. Bye.